Abbotford with Eugene Kontorovich. He's an Israeli law professor. You're very welcome. Thanks for your time uh, this evening and coming on to RT. Um, I know it's your profession, so let's just start with international law here. I know Israel says, look, we're acting in self-defense, but given the civilian death toll we've seen in Gaza and also the latest strikes we've seen today, some are saying that, look, you know, Israel is going too far. What would be your view on that? Uh, they're completely wrong. So I think it's important to start with what international law says. Uh, international law requires uh, all combatants, Israel and ha Hamas, to adhere to the principle of distinction. Distinction means military and civilian forces need to be separated and clearly marked so that both sides can target each other's military without killing civilians. Mixing the military amongst the civilians, putting military targets, uh, military operations, rocket facilities in or in proximity to civilian targets itself is a violation of the law of war, and that's what Hamas is doing. On the other hand, in fighting a war, the law of war and the Geneva Conventions understand it's impossible to have a war without uh, civilian casualties, and the rule is those civilian casualties need to be proportionate to the military objective. And right now, uh, Israel has uh, destroyed much of Hamas's capabilities, and the civilian casualties, while regrettable, are both proportionate and a direct result of Hamas's using civilians as human shields. Critics who are making this argument essentially say that if Hamas hides behind civilians, they should be able to fire rockets indiscriminately at Israeli civilians, and Israel just has to hold up its hands um, uh, uh, because they're hiding behind civilians. At the same time, Israel uses every single method to minimize civilian casualties. Um, and I should point out that the, uh, the civilian casualties are uh, relatively uh, limited. Um, so, far, uh, uh, so far, the vast majority of people killed in these operations have been Hamas fighters. Um, it's well, is that really true? I mean, we're seeing 200 dead. We know that, what, over 50 children are dead, 26 dead today. And we heard from yes. a local reporter in this occasion there was no actual warning shot fr from Israel, and those, those tower blocks just got hit. A warning shot. The fact that Israel sometimes warns people to evacuate sites so that it can destroy empty facilities and remove them from use does not mean it, can ta it has to target, uh, it can't target militants without a warning. No other country gives a warning. This is a special, and Israel does not need to give a warning every time. Uh, Hamas figures are entirely unreliable, but it seems that the vast majority are indeed uh, Ham Hamas fighters. And again, What's required is only proportionality. International law does not say that you know civilian you can't have collateral damage because every war has it. For example, in the Second che Chechen War, uh, some estimates said 200,000 civilians were killed in fighting between Russian and Chechen forces. Uh, you know, is, is that proportionate? Is it not? Each strike needs to be uh, analyzed individually. But no one has ever fought a war without civilian casualties, and in this case, Hamas wants to have civilian casualties to generate the kind of coverage. That have been uh, that we've heard for the past 15 minutes. Of course, they would obviously uh, deny that, though. Uh, given that we're just a week into this conflict, no side looks like it's going to back down. From from your opinion, how long can this go on for? Um, well, I think in one way or another, it's going to go on forever. That is to say, Israel is probably not going to remove Hamas. Uh, because removing Hamas requires reoccupying, taking control of Gaza. And of course, Israel dramatic Israel controlled Gaza from 1967 until 2005, when it evicted every single Jew living there to give the Palestinians what they wanted, territory with no Jews that they could govern themselves. That was supposed to bring peace. Now, it's clearly failed. It's clearly failed. Uh, but at the same time, after the trauma of evicting Jews from there, it's unlikely, uh, it's unlikely that Israel will take permanent control. So what this is, is it's a permanent sore in Israel's side, a situation that they cannot permanently rectify, they cannot permanently fix, and also a reminder of what happens when land is given uh, to, uh, uh, to people who are going to elect a terrorist government. Mm -hmm. So this, this particular round of fighting is likely to end this week. But there will be more rounds of fighting because Hamas will remain in power, supported by European donations to the United Nations Relief Works Agency, which is largely staffed by Hamas operatives, uh, by, for, uh, by foreign money. Uh, they're not going to go out of business, and the people of Gaza are only going to suffer more, and the people of Israel are only going to suffer more. Uh, this, I mean, it's very hard, isn't it, to pinpoint exactly 
where these tensions came from for this particular conflict, but many people said, look, it was events in East Jerusalem and the eviction of, of Palestinians there. In your view, do you think that there won't be any peace then in this region of the world until land disputes are solved? And it sounds like that that's going to be very unlikely. It's very easy to pinpoint where this started. First of all, no Palestinians have been evicted. What is being discussed is a, uh, uh, a case that has been going on for 40 years where Israeli property owners are uh, attempting to exercise property rights against Palestinians who do not own the property, who are squatters, and who refuse to pay rent. After 40 years, there has not still been an eviction order, but the tensions clearly arise from the Hamas charter, which calls for an end to Israel. So when you have a government that calls for the end to Israel, it's not surprising that they periodically attempt to do that. Uh, and, uh, you know, until Hamas gets itself a different ideology, uh, and, and adhere, while it adheres to the ideology of eliminating Israel, of course there's going to be conflict with Israel because Israel does not want to be eliminated. OK, Mr. Kontorovic, look, we're going to have to leave it there, but good to get your perspective on all of this. That was Eugene Kontorovic. He's an Israeli law professor. Thanks for coming on. My pleasure.